Hey everybody, it's GoblinX, and welcome back to another quick draft of Murders at Karlov Manor. This is going to be back for the quick draft season, a couple weeks here, so we're going to give it a draft or two alongside all the flashback drafts. So without further ado, let's scoop up our pack one, pick one. It's going to be a gleaming gear drake here. I don't love starting with a multicolored card because we have to be both of these colors or we get cut off of it, but this card is by far the strongest card in this pack. It is a 2-mana 1-1 flyer that investigates when you play it, so you get a clue token to draw a card off of later, so no matter what, it replaces itself in card advantage, and then it gets really big throughout the game, getting a plus one plus one counter every time you sacrifice an artifact, which obviously includes all those clue tokens, so it's just such a strong card for its archetype that it's a pretty high pickup, and I don't think there's any incredibly powerful uh, mono-colored cards here. There's okay removal spells, um, but both of them are kind of narrow, um, exiling only attacking creatures, and this one having to spend a bunch of mana on it, depending on how big the creature is. Um, yeah, I just think Gear Drake is the strongest card in the pack, so that is what we're going to take. For pick number two, we don't have a clear follow-up for a blue-red investigate kind of deck to go with the Gear Drake, but we do have the Dog Walker. Sort of a mythic common in this format. It's one of the best commons. I don't know if it's quite at mythic common level. Um, but very, very strong card, and you can play it even if you're not specifically red-white, because usually what you want to do is play it face down and then flip it up anyway to get three creatures off of the one spell. So if you just have consistent access to double red or double white, you can still play this in your deck, and in a blue-red deck, we certainly will. So I think Dogwalker is the strongest card here, um, but Murder is a fine removal spell towards black, and the Tipsters are fine ramp cards. I think those are my second and third favorites here. But pretty easy dog walker for me. Pick three, we've got a couple pretty fine options. The Cornered Crook, if we end up with a bunch of artifact token production, can be good. It's a little bit narrow in the sense that if you ever don't have an artifact on board when you play it, it's very, very weak. Just a 5-mana five 5-4 five is not a body that has been particularly good and limited in quite some time, so you really need that enter the battlefield effect to work out, but when you do have a really expendable artifact on board, that is quite a strong enter the battlefield effect, so very high variance card. It's either going to be great or terrible, depending on when you draw it and how well you've built around it, whereas reasonable doubt is reasonably consistent, just a nice cheap counter spell that you can use, so definitely a much lower ceiling on the card of how powerful it can be in the right position, but uh, it's just much more consistent. It's not going to be as bad in the wrong situation as Cornered Crook is, although it does have similar issues. Like, if you top deck it late game, it is still pretty bad. Usually they can always pay. Um, but yeah, these are the two best cards for the way that we're drafting right now, and uh, I don't think there's anything off-color that's quite strong enough to push me in that direction, probably Murder being the closest, but Crook a Reasonable Doubt. I could honestly take a coin flip on it, um, but I'll go for the Crook here. We'll do a little gambling, Hope we have the artifacts to go with it. Pick four. I am a big fan of Out Cold. Four mana, you get to tap two creatures and stun them, and this spell can't be countered, which is kind of unnecessary, but it makes sure you can get around the ward that all of the disguise creatures have. Um, and you get a clue token out of it. So that clue token, obviously, very good for our deck with Gear Drake and Quartered Crook, and this just being a great tempo card in general. Pretty happy to take out cold. Pick number five, just more reasonable off-color removal, not super high picks. Meddling the Youths has cute synergies with um, Cornered Crook, but it's really only giving us value in positions when we're already in a good spot. Like, if you can attack with three or more creatures a couple turns in a row, you're probably already winning, right? Like, it's a little bit of a win more card where it doesn't really help you out um, except when you're already doing super well. So I'm not, like, a massive fan of it. But if we want to do, like, a blue-red-white hybrid deck, it would fit in fine here. I think I'm just going to take Escape Tunnel, though, as solid fixing for whatever happens. Pick number six. Now we can go ahead and take a Reasonable Doubt. Bubble Smuggler's fine filler too, but I like the counter spell here for blue red tempo stuff. It's pretty easy to hold up this counter spell. Part of why it plays so well is that it works really well with the clue tokens you can get in this format, because then 
If your opponent casts something, then you reasonable doubt and counter it. If they don't, you spend your two mana and draw a card off your clue. So you're always doing something with your mana. Six seven soul enervation and push pull are both solid black removal spells. Obviously not in black at all yet, but it's between those and just a mediocre mana fixer. I'll take the push pull here, but I'm not gonna head in that direction particularly heavily. Jaded Analyst is pretty filler, but it's fine filler when you're a deck that's gonna have a lot of clue tokens to activate that ability. And everything in this pack's pretty filler. All right, Deduce is actually very good for the clue token kind of decks. So I'm a very big fan of that. Pick 10 is nothing we're interested in. Pick 11, another reasonable doubt. It's looking good. It's great with the deuce and just clue tokens in general. And let's see what we open up in pack two. We got some solid luck on the pulls here because both Pyrotechnic Performer and Surveillance Monitor are just pretty strong on-color cards. We could also do a little pivot here towards Private Eye. It's a great card for blue-white detectives and that's quite a strong archetype. So a very strong pack here where I think all three of these cards would be pretty reasonable. We are only two cards deep on red technically because Dog Walker we could play in blue-white off of the hybrid mana. So we would have to cut Gear Drake and Cornered Crook to turn into blue-white detectives here. And give up on Pyrotechnic Performer. It's close. I think these two are better than Surveillance Monitor a bit. But they're both really good options here. This card can really lead to some blowout curves in the right kind of detectives deck. Don't remember seeing a ton of good white, but we didn't see a ton of good red either. I think blue's looking pretty solid, but deciding between red or white being more open is a little rough. So I guess since we've already got our foot in the door in red, we'll just stick there and take the Pyrotechnic Performer. We haven't seen a massive signal towards white or a massive signal towards red. Pick two, Red Herring, Out Cold, and Case of the Filched Falcon are all okay in blue-red. The case is pretty narrow. You need to have three artifacts on board, which can be difficult even in a dedicated blue-red artifact deck, a dedicated blue-red investigate deck. If you never solve this case, it is really bad. So I think I'm just going to take the more consistent like Out Cold here. I don't think we're aggressive enough to be super excited about Red Herring. A little better in red-white than uh, red-blue. Now, Projector Inspector's a sick one. A little better in blue-white than blue-red, but still just a good card for any blue deck. Just a lot of random detectives in the format. This is a great way to set up your draws, and we already have two copies of Out Cold, so I can take it over the third. I will certainly be grabbing a Galvanize over another Projector Inspector here, though. Great, efficient removal. For pick five, Gadget Technician is super reasonable for us, so let's toss that in there. Now we can flip up a Granite Witness, even in blue-red, so we'll grab that. Pick seven, Mistway Spy is kind of filler, but it can give us a extra clue token. Now we grab a filler Curve Topper between Criminologists and Investigators. Probably get a little higher up. We've already got one five drop. And uh, all of our disguise cards we could play for five mana. So we cast them for three and then flip them for two in the same turn. Treat them as five drops on occasion. So I think we take the, the real big one here. The very top end card. Yeah, I'll grab the six drop. Wield the Surveillance Monitor, that's pretty sweet. We might have enough synergies for clue tokens that Cold Case Cracker is actually more exciting, though. Just another way to investigate. Investigating when it dies. Also, just flying is pretty good in the set. And it's pretty close. We can use this Thopter token to our Cornered Crook. That's pretty cool. And just getting a Thopter token is already pretty good value. We've got four mana spells to collect the evidence somewhat easily. 
or if we just cast like a reasonable doubt and a deduce, that's four mana for the collect evidence. I think Surveillance Monitor is certainly the stronger card in a vacuum. And I think it still looks like it works pretty well in this deck, so I'm going to take it over Cold Case Cracker. Pick 10, we can try out the Case of the Filch Falcon, see if we get there. On uh, Artifact Count, that Surveillance Monitor certainly helps. Another Out Cold over a Bubble Smuggler. Grab a Felonious Rage for the sideboard, that we're just not going to play. And see what we open up in Pack 3? All right, well, this is interesting. Double Pyrotechnic Performer. So I guess if we draw both of these, we can do an insane amount of damage to our opponent off of flipping them, which is pretty cute. I mean, that's just the pick. The more the merrier. They play very well together. And we're starting to get really aggressive now. We have two two-mana three-twos that we can just play out on curve if we don't want to do the flip thing. So just the four-drop person of interest. Two two-twos, one of which has Menace. Very good aggressive card, and this deck is starting to get, as I said, very aggressive off those pyrotechnic performers. So grab the person. Really like a fender at large as the top end for any red aggro deck, and we're becoming quite aggro. So I would be happy to play an offender at large. I think this deck could use a mask maker pretty fine if we curve out with it on turn one. It's a very high variance card. The difference between playing this turn one and turn three is monumental, so if you don't have it in your opening hand, it's pretty bad. But if it's in your opening hand, playing your disguise cards on turn two instead of turn three is pretty good. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six disguise cards minimum. I don't know. Bystander is also pretty narrow, pretty weak. A two one with no text is really bad. But... If we get the clue token out of it, it has good synergies and it's actually pretty good. So either one of these is pretty high variance and pretty narrow. It'll be pretty good at the right time, but very mediocre otherwise. And those are really the only options. So we're, we're taking a gamble on either of these here. With the double pyrotechnic performer for disguise nonsense, I think I want to grab some more disguise idiots here so let's go for the mask maker and dump them all out real quick pick five i'll grab another galvanize over just a one one disguise card because i want to flip up big ones with pyrotechnic performer pick six take another mistway spy over hot shot investigators though yeah probably at lower curve here I do like Crime Stopper Sprite. 2 2 Flyer, stun a thing with enough evidence. Pretty good. Pick 8, another reasonable doubt. Hopefully, just dump our hand and then hold up some reasonable doubts. Tempo kind of aggro. <laughs> We're not going to play three Mistway Spies, but I'm not going to play any demand answers. Maybe I could play a mo uh, Flotsam. Just for the evidence, but I only have two cards that care about the evidence. The Crime Stopper Sprite and the Surveillance Monitor. If you're like a dedicated green-blue collect evidence deck, then these uh, split cards can be really nice. Because you can cast the cheap half, but then like collect evidence six by exiling it from your grave. But we don't. We have like two collect evidence cards, so I don't think we're running... Flotsam Jetson, because both halves are pretty mediocre if you're not specifically wanting a really high mana value card in your grave. Alright, let's build this bad boy, shall we? Um, we're getting rid of push and pull, because we just can't cast push at all. And most of these uh, hybrid cards are pretty bad if you can't cast both halves of the card. What else are we cutting here? Maybe Analysts? We can still get pretty aggressive without them. On Curve, that's a lot of Mistway Spies, too. Laundry's pretty filler. Um, plenty of Disguise cards here, so plenty of 3-drops. Yeah, just super low Curve, finish things off with, like, Out Colds in the end. Got all these, and then some Top End, like an Investigators and a Land here, even, maybe. Double blue, this is blue and or red, this is double red. Yeah, we can flip all that. Yeah, sure. I mean, I could see cutting the case potentially as well if I want to go 17 lands. 
one, two, three, four, five, six clue tokens in the deck with the case. And then also a Granite Witness, two different Thopter token producers. Three or more artifacts is quite a bit. Really don't think we're super good at solving this. We are aggressive enough, though, and we are really trying to dump all of our creatures out on curve that we're not going to crack our clue tokens until pretty late, so they will be sitting there over time to where they can pile up for the case, so... And I also kind of like cutting land 17, so I am going to go ahead and do that. Play a 16 land deck here. 15 blue, 11 red, so slightly more blue than red looks right to me. 8-7 split. Run the escape tunnel because it can be either color or it can randomly win, giving something unblockable. Yeah. Looks super fine. Let's blue-red tempo aggro some people out, shall we? Right, here we are on the play with turn one Mask Maker. That is about the only time you want it. Is turn one. So perfectly happy to see that. We only have the one disguise creature in hand to go with it. But if we top deck one, it'll be pretty great. Sanctuary wall. Uh, we drew all three of our reasonable doubts. That's really awkward. But what can you do? All right, well, really weird to see a sanctuary wall here, but that is pretty big bummer for us. It's going to stop a significant amount of damage. They're just going to pass turn. They're stuck on two lands. All right, flip this up then instead of reasonable doubting, and we definitely crack this. Another blue source so we can cast two reasonable doubts in one turn if need be. Maybe that'll be the case. I'm not going to out-cold just a Sanctuary Wall, am I? No. I still hit for two a turn. And being able to counter everything they play for three turns is pretty massive. And if they just play, like, one okay blocker, then I can out-cold both the things, and that's pretty good. Okay, reasonable doubt it is. Oh yeah, I can suspect the blocker, and it can't block. It has Menace and can't block. Oh, that's so gross, actually. I completely forgot about the suspected mechanic. You can suspect your opponent's creatures, and if it is suspected, your creature gets Menace and can't block. Well, whatever is suspected has Menace and can't block. Um, but that's relevance on your creatures for the Menace and your opponent's creatures for the can't block. Our opponent is having a very bad time. They just still haven't drawn any lands on their... Uh, Two land opener, so the game looks pretty over here. This was the wrong auto tap, but what are you gonna do? I'm too lazy. And the game is over anyway. It is a one and zero heading into game two. All right, here we are for game two on the draw. This is actually a reasonable hand towards solving the case of the Filch Falcon, which is kind of cool. We're gonna do the thing. Save the bubble smuggler for now because I can hold up reasonable doubt and deduce if I don't need to do it. Gonna pass turn? Alright, let's deduce then. They have their own reasonable doubt here. It is good. Because we have the case. No more lies? That is unexpected from the blue-black mana base, but... Works the same as reasonable doubt. Mm, let them resolve one thing. Yeah, I think that's fine, because then I'm holding up actual instance alongside reasonable doubt. Cadaver's pretty solid, right? 
Whenever they sack a clue, bring it back from grave to hand. Yeah, that is solid. I think I take three here to be open to countering something. They cast a good spell. But if they just move to the end step, we're going to out cold. Okay, Sanctuary Wall is not a good spell, especially when I can suspect it. If I suspect it, then it's really bad. Okay, now... Get some stuns in the end step. Working our clue token count up. All right. We're just going to cast another out cold so we can solve our case here. And then we can start cracking all our clues. Can't counter that. They've got the mana up for reasonable doubt. Reasonable doubt actually looking really bad this game. I actually want to get a tax in here by doing this. Let's see, this hopefully wins the fight. Three mana for a flip here. It does win the fight, but they get to draw a card off of the flip. Not terrible. The case has been solved. Another disguised card. We draw a person of interest. That's not terrible. We've got perfect mana to cast that and hold up reasonable doubt here. I still think a 4-4 four, four flyer is the best thing we can do right now with our mana. Sanctuary wall, I guess, is going to be annoying about it. But I think we do this here. Move to combat. See what Sanctuary Wall wants to do. Nothing. Interesting. Let's jam then. And damage. We're threatening. They crack back for six on board. But maybe the face down is gigantic and it's going to be an issue. Take ten, it looks like. All right, I think I'm supposed to hold up reasonable doubt. Because if they keep casting cheap enough spells to where it's not going to do anything, we can still crack a clue. But there could be an argument for Inspector there. His life totals are getting a little low here. A more on-board power and toughness. 
is definitely relevant. Makeshift binding and reasonable doubt doesn't do anything about it. Makeshift binding, fantastic removal. Exile plus gain two. Actually, even in like, even in Modern Horizons three, I think the common removal is worse than makeshift binding, which is kind of wild when you think about it. Yeah, makeshift binding would be White's best removal at common in that format. <laughs> If it was in there, that's just how good it is. Better than the removal in Modern Horizons. Yeah, makeshift binding super wins the race here, and it's more than cheap enough to get around our reasonable doubts. And then they just pass the turn. Their stuff's just all so cheap. It's been basically free to play around the reasonable doubt. They haven't cast anything that costs more than three. Surveillance monitor is the best play here, holding a 1-1 one, one up for Cadaver. A 3-3 three, three up for their face down. Alright, Sanctuary Wall, no stun is the play. We're at 11, they're at 12, but they have more creatures here. I think they have the better position for sure. They have their own case of the Filch Falcon, and that'll be their third artifact. So now they're gonna have a 4-4 flyer as well. That is really, really bad for us. And again, their spells just keep being like one mana to line up super bad for reasonable doubt. I can tax two of your five. What will you do about that? Perimeter Enforcer is an incredible card, one of the best uncommons in the format. Still, most everything is like incidentally in a, a detective, so it plays kind of like a two mana, two two flying life link, which is absurd. No attacks from our opponents. They just solve the case, get ready to make a four four flyer, and we're becoming way behind on board. Mask Maker is real bad this late in the game, as we said when we drafted it. Dog Walker, not so much, but there's a lot of flying we have to deal with here. That we can't really... We really need, like, our Galvanizes and another Out Cold. We have cards that are good at impacting the board state, but we don't have them in hand right now. Flying might be important enough to play Technician over Dog Walker here. Technician, Mask Maker, hold up Reasonable Doubts. At some point I have to just give up on Reasonable Doubt, but I just know as soon as I do that they're going to play like a 6-drop. But they have like all these activated abilities and stuff too. That are getting them to hold up mana for those naturally. Just don't think it's ever gonna line up at this point. Yeah, I mean they're on their seventh mana.
Just gonna sanctuary wall here, sure. This flip's gonna be pretty good for us. Despite the lifelink, we kind of need to kill the 3-1. Otherwise, I take 7 here. Do they have the one blue mana trick? They were looking at their hand there. Nope. We do get rid of the cadaver until they find some more clue tokens. We actually don't really have an expendable artifact on board right now. Because even the 1-1 one, one flyer can block the perimeter forcer in theory. So I don't really want to cornered crook it to the enforcer. Opponents at 13. They don't have sanctuary wall mana up here. If they let too much stuff through, I might be able to just cornered crook their face and that might be our best bet. We can hit them for 10. So we go like, we just send 10 damage in. If I attack with anything else and they end up blocking either of the three power creatures, they're still not dead anyway. So I think I need to hold up enough blockers to not just like die to ground crackbacks here. Especially, yeah, I really need like the flying. Blocker. Well, no, I guess it doesn't matter because they just Sanctuary Wall it. Um, I get to hit them for one more damage because of that. Because it has all the plus and plus one counters. It's not base stats 4-4. Four, four. I mean, it's still not going to matter if they block a single creature. We still die on the crackback. Yeah, this was... I probably shouldn't have sent in the 4-4 four, four flyer. We're just so likely to die on the return trip. Although, here we go. If we kill both of these, then they only have five power on their board and we're at six. So we don't die on the crackback. Cool. That looks good. All right. And then we can cornered crook the perimeter enforcer. So I just take four here. So even if they top deck a detective, we don't die. Safest play. It's a close, close, close race here. But that was a pretty big turn for us. They're playing off the top now. But all it takes is two swings from their shoe and we're dead. I just noticed if they hadn't have used the behind the mask to try to stop some damage there, they would have had a lethal crack back because they would have hit for eight in the sky. It's pretty lucky. Okay, on board. Tap, trade, take four. Wait, we send everybody in because we can't block anything anyway. Maybe I should have just ended up casting a reasonable doubt at some point. Just to suspect the Sanctuary Wall, even if it wouldn't have ever countered anything. Yeah, none of these creatures block anything, so get in there, buddies.
It's probably block surveillance monitor go to two life. Oh, it's another behind the mask. Use it pre-combat. I can now suspect the shoe in response to this so that the shoe cannot block. And then I can cast a second reasonable doubt um, to make sure that this doesn't resolve and I hit them for over lethal here. Sure, we'll suspect that. There we go. They can't block. That is nine damage. Close, close, close game there. And I think maybe we could have made it a little more in our favor if we had thrown one of those reasonable doubts out earlier. Just thinking of that suspect being valuable at just getting blockers out of the way. So, it'll be interesting to keep in mind in the future, but we are 2-0 and heading into game three. All right, here we are on the draw for game three. Hand looks solid. I don't know if we're supposed to disguise the performer or just start beating down. It is way slower to disguise it, right? Yeah, because I'd be flipping it up on turn four, and I want to cast a person of interest on turn four or an out cold. I have a bunch of four drops I want to cast, so I think we actually just play performer face up turn two. So that all our mana is open when we have four of it. Murder, fair enough. I don't really know what that does, but I'm not going to hold up a reasonable doubt for a long time, so I'm just going to counter that. Let's curve on out. Probably cornered Crook for no value. Just to have a 5-4 on the board. Keep the pressure on. That's not great, but a 5-4 is fine against it. And then next turn, once they have two creatures out, we stun both of them. And draw a card, because I'll have the six mana, so I can crack a clue. It's kind of rough, but doesn't impact the board. It's not the biggest deal. Don't get to be on the beat down here. Hello. What a draw. Right after they gave me the evidence for this. They are down to nine. And we've got an out cold for their next blockers. They're black white, though. Two colors with the most cheap removal in the format. And they're going to gain a couple life, go back to 11, draw a card. Clandestine meddler. I'm surprised they chose to suspect there. That means the vampire just cannot block, period. Um, but they're already 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yeah, they're dead on board. The out cold. And there we go. No instance in the hand, and we are 3 and 0 oh, undefeated as we had in a game 4. All right, here we are for game 4. We'll see how much reasonable doubt does this game. Hmm... This would have been so good, turn one, because then we would have had the clue token here. I don't care what it does, I get to counter it, so I'm going to. Mm, well, shield's down. Because I think I need to set up the clue just to crack it towards mana here. With no lands drawn yet. 
Yeah, and then I need to inspect her. Oh man, live mana is a lot. But if I do end up hitting land four, casting two out colds in a row means we solve the case and then we can corner crook after we solve it. Like it's a good plan if we hit lands. That's the problem is we don't know if we will hit lands. really does feel safest to just ditch the crook here. Yeah. Kind of sad. And there's cold case crackers. So they get the big lifelink swing. Probably galvanize this lifelinker here, but we'll hold up reasonable doubt first. Take a point of extra damage to make sure they don't cast anything better than it. I mean, I could always galvanize the 3-3, three, three, but I give them a clue token when I do. Slow them down more. I don't know, the lifelink's like a huge deal. To me. Deduce. And it dies. There we go. Now we can out cold two turns in a row to solve the case. And when the race on board, the game plan is active. Tempo time. Pretty good. Could reasonable doubt it, but I really want to get the clues towards case of the Filch Falcon. And because it's... Oops, I forgot. I could have stopped three more damage there. That was bad. I'm commentating too much. I need to play more. Um, because I can just keep stunning it, and it's really just like one threat. I think it's better to just let it resolve and keep it stunned pretty much forever here. Okay, now because of Mask Maker letting me hold up Reasonable Doubt while playing this thing, I'm going to do that instead of holding up Out Cold here. I mean, this is a lot of damage. Okay, Pilfer Proof doesn't do anything for... Giving them blockers. If they don't get any blockers, they're just dead. And even if they do, I outcold the blockers. Tap enchanted creature. It doesn't untap during the controller's untap step. And we'll pay the ward and then I counter this and then they die. I'll suspect it for menace too, I guess. All right, I actually don't know if this is lethal, but I think it is. It gets exacties, it might be one off. Uh, it's literally one off. Mm. Well, if I don't die here, they're definitely dead because we have another out cold. If I do die here, it's my fault. I outcolded after they attacked with Cold Case Cracker when they were fully tapped out. So we took three extra damage for nothing. Um, but it doesn't look likely here. What is this doing? It's solved. It adds more clues. Sure. Oh, we might be dead. Go to one. Whoo. <laughs> Almost punted the game. Really, really close one. But we do get the victory in the end. 4-0, oh, heading into game 5.
All right, let's see if we can keep it up. Game five now. Don't love this hand, but it's got good mana, and that's the main thing you need. We might curve out with Smuggler as a two mana two one. That would be weird. But if I hit an untapped source, Falcon into Smuggler into face down Dog Walker would be the line. If I don't draw an untapped land, I'll probably just get Escape Tunnel out of the way for a second red source to be able to flip Dog Walker later. I did hit an untapped land, so I can Smuggler into Dog Walker. Plus, this is the red source for Dog Walker. We're against red, so we probably do... I mean, turn one Mask Maker as well. We probably do need to play a little quick to have some defenses up here. Although I've got the out cold for later. If I play it as a 2-1 now, then I don't get to have a 6-5 later. That's, that's the big downside. A 6-5 is large. And also, I wouldn't be getting my tap land out of the way before turn 4, so I might not be able to like out cold turn 4. I feel like we're just playing to the board here, though. ASAP, when we see Mask Maker, we know our opponent's playing a 2-2 next turn. Like, worst case scenario. Yeah. Yeah, we gotta get things rolling here. Alright, I hit another 3-drop, which is good. Because now I have an excuse to play a tap land next turn. Okay, they need a combat trick here because none of the ward cards are going to beat a 2-2. Some of them would beat a 2-1, but I think I still put it there. It has to be specifically a combat trick. The flips don't beat 2-2s two until 5 mana or better. Okay, I did hit the natural out cold mana. Something that's a two mana flip. I could go like out cold this turn and then face down offender, flip up dog walker the turn after. That is only if I had an untapped source next turn still though. Yeah, now let's just keep playing to the board. out galvanize here sure you got it oak for three i'm feeling all right here not great but all right a little floody Could be where we finally get punished for running case the filtered falcon, because even if I out call them at two out of three artifacts. So it may actually be better to flip dog walker crack a clue right now. Probably is, because there's really no guarantee we're flipping this if I out cold instead. Okay, they've got the five mana for their own potential offender at large. That could be to 3 1 if I block their face down. I don't think I'm blocking at all here if they send everybody in. Two 
2 damage. Down to 14. Another face down is the play. And then a repeat offender. Alright, sorry Case, I kind of have to give up, I think. Solving you. Yeah, it would have been quite some time, because none of these are another artifact anyway. An out cold plus draw card, or I can play a face up performer and out cold, but I can't play a face down performer and an out cold here. If I attack him with dog walker, I trade into mask mask maker. It's pretty bad. I think we're just holding on blocks with our new creature. Alongside the team. Snarling Gorehound. They get to surveil when creatures with power two or less hit the board. There's Neighborhood Guardian. That's a fantastic one. Luckily, they didn't curve out with that on turn two, but this card just makes so many combats in your favor. When there's so many games of just like two twos running into two twos, making it so yours are three threes and break through a lot of board states. Very strong card, big fan. Deduce is pretty beautiful gonna be two artifacts now now galvanizes five damage as well mm. do i just galvanize the neighborhood guardian probably not i think i have to just hold on to it and wait I mean, if we accept that this just drew us a card, that's fine, right? We played a card to draw a card. It was a cantrip. It cycled itself away. I'm trying to get myself in position where I justify cracking this clue. Because if we just crack, like, two more clues, we just stay ahead in cards here. We can dig a little faster than our opponent. And that can hopefully break through this board state over time. It's so... Tempting here. It's like super tempting to just hold on to these clues no matter what and try to solve this case, but I don't think that's right. Well, we get to find out what all their nonsense is now. So, like, the whole board is going to trade at this point, <laughs> pretty much. I guess we lose some stuff if I block the wrong face down. They're at 12. If I can survive this... Six power on the crack back, and then an out cold is going to be big later. Maybe I did need to out cold here. Chose against it because the galvanize plus clue crack for the turn. But that could have been wrong. Certainly could have been wrong. I can do like this to keep the max number of creatures around. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven damage. They hit on the job. We either make blocks where our whole board dies for nothing, or they kill us. Okay, if it's a fender at large, we should be fine. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Go to 4. But I can kill the Mask Maker to keep Performer around, or I take the trade there, kill the Guardian to take less damage. I probably have to kill Guardian. OK. 
Okay, now I'm going to out cold these two to win the race from here. Jeez. I do need to hit some kind of spell to win the race from there. But I had multiple pieces of card draw towards it. We'll see. We got another clue token and another draw step here. Oh no, there's the blocker for Dog Walker. Oh, is it double spell here? Ah. Uh... Really losing the top deck war, but Gorehound helps assure that. Okay, those those are strong enough cards to really make up for the last few draws. Dogwalker for a face down is pretty good if we can kill it before it flips. And it's got Vigilance, so it's still going to be holding up on blocks here. Okay, Dogwalker for face down it is. Kill a Museum Nightwatch before it flips? That's pretty excellent. And I can four mana galvanize the other face down, so they just have a gore hound in terms of creatures that are going to be untapped here. Although I do have the gear drake to, guard, to draw the card to kill a fender, but look, I killed an offender anyway. And that was one that was about to get the plus two plus O trigger. That played really, really well for me. This is two out of three artifacts for case, but we can't guarantee we're hitting another, so I think I need to just draw the card. They are just top deck in the truth over there. Off of blind draws when we are digging for our lives. I can trade Gear Drake into this on a double block, crack a clue. I mean, I'm just dead if they get another turn. I just take it and hope to top deck like an absolute champion. If they can do it, maybe we can too. Projector Inspector digs one more time. Oh my god. Yeah. That's the truth. Right there. That's ridiculously good. If I attack with both these creatures, I am dead to top deck removal on Inspector. I have to stun the Menace and the Face Down, because we don't know what the Face Down is, and Menace is not going to be blockable easily. So we need to stun these and hopefully chump a Fender with a Dog. And I think I have to hit them for only two here, rather than out holding right now, just so there's two turns of breathing room. And by keeping the dog up for the chump, we're also playing around top deck removal, not being lethal anymore. Because then they removal spell Inspector and I chump with dog, or they remove dog and I chump with Inspector. Oh, 
I think they missed. We found the miss. Person of interest is big. It's also a detective hitting the board. Discard this mountain. So we cast it pre-combat to see if our draw affects combat at all. Because if it clears a fender out of the way, that's lethal on board. Oh my god, it does. Oh my god. Top deck hero. On this side of the board, baby. Stun all your blockers. And send in the squad. He just keeps getting away with it, baby. That is undefeated again. We are, what, 4-0 heading into game 5 now? Pretty average kind of blue-red artifact tempo deck, but some decent plays and some great draws. Really, the great draws have uh, just carried us into 5-0 and now. One win away from being in the money in this quick draft. We take those. 5-0 and heading into game six. All right, here we are for game six. Bad mana here, going to be a forced mulligan. This is better mana. And we ditch a land, keeping a three lander. Yeah, this looks fine. Ditch a blue source, so we have double red for Dog Walker. Ooh. Great draw. Means I'm not holding Reasonable Doubt up for a while, but... By playing the Gear Drake, I have the clue token to go with the Reasonable Doubt, so that if I don't need to counter something, I crack the clue. That gives me a really good turn 3 hold up Reasonable Doubt turn. It doesn't even look that suspicious. Alright. Oh yeah, we've got a really easy turn to hold up Reasonable Doubt. Because we can crack the clue or cast the galvanize or cast the reasonable doubt in the future. Face down card has arrived. Welcome. Um, I'm a little tempted to play a face down dog walker here. I think I'm just going to do it because then we have just an insane amount of options with what we do with our mana. We can flip up a dog walker and counter something, or flip up a dog walker and crack a clue, or we can galvanize and crack a clue, or galvanize and reasonable doubt. A pyrotechnic performer now makes me want to just start flipping things like nobody's business. So, And our opponent's stuck on three mana here, so they're unlikely to cast anything terrifying. So, um, yeah, let's just start machine gunning some disguise flip damage in with this pyrotechnic performer everybody's going to be excited to see the show and we're going to have all kinds of pyrotechnic malfunctions the audience will be set ablaze today oh, that's a lot of lifelink well so much for so much for dealing a million that's going to kind of nullify pretty much all the flip damage we're about to do here. Don't mind person of interest. But it would mean not flipping dog walker right now and flipping dog walker is like sick. And I have excellent two mana things to hold up alongside flipping dog walker. So it's not like I'm skipping out on casting spells to do this. Okay, that is still a wild amount of damage. Never mind. Lifelink didn't matter too much. They're still down to nine. They're over it. They're done. Six and oh, it is. We just kind of just glide our way right into a... Uh, I was going to say a positive win rate run, but we've had a positive record for a while now. We've made it all the way into the money, is what I should say. We are leaving this event with more gems than it costs to enter. And I guess we're in the final boss now with three rounds in the chamber. See if we can't get a full undefeated run for the return to Murders at Karlov Manor.
All right. Here we are for the potential final battle. This is a pretty good hand at solving this case. Um, it is better to hold up deduce or reasonable doubt on turn two than it is to play the case turn one. So I'm going to set up for that by getting the tap line out of the way immediately. And it is going to be a bummer if we don't manage to hit a land off of deduce or our draw step here, because then I'll I'll have to probably crack some clues. Towards mana, but hopefully it doesn't come to that. Come on, deduce. No. All right, this could be bad. The biggest flaw of the hand for sure is that it's just a two lander. Yikes. Yeah, so much for solving the case. We need to hit mana. Oh, God. Wow. Yeah, having to discard the hand size is like miserable here. Now they can just have reasonable doubt incredibly easily. What's our weakest flip card? Probably Granite Witness. Alright, they don't have their own reasonable doubt. They're going to play a long goodbye. It's a fine one for one trade. Another 2-2. Two, two. It's the fourth mana. Yeah, I think it's time for a person of interest. I doubt both of these are big enough to attack past a 2-2. At least one of them is, so if they send both in, it's kind of a shell game here. I'm trying to figure out which one the 2-2 will definitely trade into. Uh, but they didn't they didn't leave all their mana up, so if they send in just a 2 ton blocking immediately. They need 5 mana or more to win that fight. Yeah, so they're just poking us for one, so now we've got time to sit here and set things up now after the really slow start is looking fine. So now we probably start the Pyrotechnic Performer damage chain. If it doesn't get uh, killed by something here. It's got Vigilance? No. It's a little annoying, but they'll shoot them for three. And it's just a one for one trade. Again, not bad for me, really. Just a little sad. Things aren't going perfectly, but they're not going bad. They're not like two for one removing us there. All right, now we're racing. Sure, if we hit a land, we are golden here. Their board's going to be a single fairy snoop. Let's go. Let's go. Case of the Filched Falcon has three mana, draw one card. Actually playing reasonably this game and last game. Who needs to solve the case, honestly? Who needs to solve it? We're already winning the race on board, and we've got a significant amount of damage coming up. We've got the perfect discard for this agent, because Mask Maker's useless at this point anyway. So Agent does basically nothing here, the 1-1 one, one body being um, completely insignificant as well. Um, so here we're going to play a face down and cast Galvanize. Hold up the ability to cast Galvanize probably, so it's probably face down Technician, because then I can flip it up or cast Galvanize depending on what happens. I guess we go to combat first. See if they want to do anything. Out cold would be pretty good. 
Yeah, Outcold's very good in this matchup. We've got two of them ourselves, and that'd be probably our best draw in the deck here. Because it is a race right now. Pretty close race. I could hold on to this in case they have a third Unscrupulous Agent. Um, but I think I want to just play it in case I get more card draw. It's where I have to dump a bunch of mana into a clue, but then also more spells and stuff. Yep, Deduce is very good right now. Get ahead in card advantage and start converting that into getting ahead on board. Okay. Get this mana investment out of the way. Solid attacks from those two. Now a Dog Walker. I like that. Gonna be a very good board state. Eliminate the impossible. Really good in a race as well. Tons a card advantage as well. They just take one damage now. Okay. Again, I don't love how things are going currently. But our board can threaten a significant amount of damage here. Surveillance monitor. That's multiple blockers. That's a bummer for sure. Yeah, they have found a lot of creatures to dump out now off all that card draw. They're nice and stable here. Okay. Oof. Kind of forgot we had two of these things. Maybe should have waited, but now this one can maybe work with the offender. Actually, we have perfect mana to play this and still galvanize surveillance monitor here, which is... Definitely something we're interested in doing. How did they unsuspect this? What? When did that happen? Oh, eliminate the impossible? That's very funny. That's really, really funny. Okay. Eight life. Leave the dogs, I guess. One, two, three. If this isn't like a bubble smuggler, like a six, five, I should be able to just attack with everybody. Even if it is, they have to have exactly removal spell plus flip that, or I just block with performer. I guess I'll hold one dog back. We'll meet in the middle on that one. Our opponent is at one life now, so they have to kill us right now. Or we may have just danced our way into the 7 0. I guess if I sent in that dog as well, they wouldn't have been able to kill the dog. They would have had to block something bigger with the 2-2 two -two and lose the face down. So I guess I should have sent everybody in. It's another flyer, but that's just 2 damage. Looks fine. They give us a bunch of their permanents to draw a bunch of cards and try to draw an out here. But it's got to be a really good one for them to survive at one life. So we'll see. They're probably giving us like the whole board here. <laughs> at least like 5 cards probably. Yeah, this is going to be a lot of card draw for our opponent. Woo! Did they find an out? Another eliminate the impossible. Something like that could be the plan. For when we go for our counterattacks here. Send in. Get the swamp back. Let's tap it. Prime Stopper Sprite, two blockers and a stun. Stun the Technician. 
shoot for three? Unless they have removal for this. Okay, they don't. I was going to say, if they have instant speed removal for that, they can actually... I think if they kill it with the, the wither thing, that gives it minus two, minus two, they definitely take less damage. But I think if they kill it before that ability resolves, it does zero anyway. I might be wrong on that. Anyways, doesn't matter. They did not have interaction for it, so they scoop them up, and that's a full 7-0 with the pretty average kind of blue-red Investigate Tempo deck. We just ran pretty hot there, drew pretty well. Did have to play uh, somewhat tight there. I'm not going to say I was like a genius and came up with insane lines or anything like that, but not a ton of punts today. There was one pretty bad one. We, we almost we almost lost the race because I, I clicked too fast and didn't out cold when they were tapped out. Um, but outside of that, I think most of our, our reasoning went pretty sound and found some wins that could have been losses uh, otherwise, so... Full 7-0 undefeated run with your solid um, average blue-red deck. I mean, double performer was big. These snuck in a lot of damage, so it was not a bombless deck. This is probably above average for blue-red, a little bit above average, um, just because of these cards alone. But when it comes to the commons and uncommons, it's mostly just pretty filler stuff for the archetype. The outcolds and the galvanize being like the best stuff here, but the creatures themselves, like we're playing some off-color disguise cards to fill out the deck. Um, we're playing like a bubble smuggler and a mask maker and stuff, cornered crook. Like we're not like the dream blue red deck that's like two gear drakes and one of the satchels or something like that. Um, we're playing a case of the filter falcon that we didn't even solve a few games. You know, it's not the perfect blue red deck, but still. Good enough to get a full 7-0 undefeated run with some good draws like we had there. I'll absolutely take it. Great draft for the return to Murders at Karlov Manor. But that is going to end today's video. As always, I'd like to thank my patrons and YouTube members for their support, as well as you for watching the video. If you're interested in seeing some more, you can always like, comment, and subscribe to tell the YouTube algorithm to send you some more on your recommended feed. If you'd like to catch me live, you can check out the Twitch channel in the link in the description below. And if you'd like to support the channel directly, you can check out the Patreon link in the description below. But other than that, as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon for some more Magic Arena.